So last week we were talking about all the different knee cut grips you can use. We went through the deep collar grip position here, working the knee cut like this. We talked about grabbing at the hip or at the ribs, I mean, here, tucking the knee or the elbow into the hip and then knee cutting. And then we talked about the one reaching over the top to really solidify your hold and knee cutting from here. So sometimes you're facing someone who has a very good guard to the point where you can't even get past their legs. The, the, every time you try and knee cut and get your position here, he either gets his foot in on your hip or something is happening where I can't really even secure the sleeve grip and I'm just kind of hit this wall here like this. So this doesn't mean the game is over. The fight's not over here. You can continue passing. Usually if a pass fails to one side, don't force it, just move to the other side and take what your opponent gives you and turn it into something else. But there are some ways if you really want to get that knee cut, there's some tricks you can do. The first one is just addressing the grips kind of in a reverse order. So instead of going to the pants first and trying to knee cut from here and then going to the sleeve and the collar, there's like this there's a transition there that can be difficult where he has opportunities to actually defend. So what we're gonna do today is step into his guard into one of the most common positions where they may have your um, pants or ankle like this. But instead of going to the knees, the first thing I'm gonna do is to go for a cross grip on his sleeve like this, okay? This grip is really unique because I don't have to pull from top to create tension in the arm and actually get a reaction. I can just stand up kind of straight here. So just with a little bit of putting my hips in and standing up straight, I can lift his body off the ground and initiate a control here where he's not able to use this hand back on me, right? It's kind of like grip fighting in like from a stand-up scenario. Like he can't really use this hand anymore. He can try and pull it back to the mat, but it's pretty unlikely he's gonna be able to pull my deadlift strength, right? So I can keep this guy pretty strong, pulling up into him here. Now what this does is it instantly kills this hand's ability to defend my pass. So any pass I choose, he won't be able to use this hand to defend it, right? Because he's focused on trying to pull it away. And if I guide this hand in the proper angle when I actually go for my knee cut position, you'll see that this grip is pretty much useless. So you're taking it at a slight disadvantage because committing to a sleeve grip means that he will get a grip on your ankle. It's not like the other positions where we talk a lot about, about staying out, uh, keeping distance, cutting the angle, and then engaging in a way where he never has an opportunity to grip you, and we instantly put him in a defensive posture and he's pushing instead of gripping. This one, usually it'll be a little more fair of a fight for the grip battle, but I have the far superior grip in this position, so I can utilize this in a different way than he's able to use the ankle grip here. From this position, it's okay to switch hands as well. Like going left hand, it's the same control. It just depends on what you like to do when you actually go for your knee cut, okay? So whichever hand you like, you can use the corresponding um, knee cut grips that we were using earlier. So if I get the sleeve grip on my left hand and I wanna start knee cutting, my right hand is gonna be going to the collar like we did last week, right? I start knee cutting here immediately like this. And the cool thing about this is even if he holds onto my ankle really tight and he's got the grip, because I have his arm here like this and I can reach to the collar right away and I'm already lifting his body off the ground, it creates an opening here on the knee cut side that even if he has my ankle, when I bring it across, my knee goes all the way to the mat pretty dynamically and he never has a chance to push or recover. And that's when we start trying to drop our hip and sliding our knee out and down to secure the actual knee cut position, okay? So the only thing that's changing from our original knee cut that we practiced last week is instead of engaging at the legs first and trying to drive our knee through here and then getting the grip and setting up, we're just doing that before we do anything else. So I step in, grab the sleeve, and posture. My right hand goes to the collar, and I wanna keep trying to pull him up. His instinct is gonna be to pull away from me and try and put his back flat on the mat. And that's when I just, drive my knee right through to the mat. And this, when you do it like this, this knee in front is not as important because we already compromised so much of his defense by pulling his head off the mat that even if his leg is in front, I can just slide my knee back and down and collapse over the top of the knee. And then as I pass to side control, bring this arm into my hip and control the position. All right? From the cross grip, it's the same thing, but instead of going to the collar, I would go to the armpit position here, like this. And then bring this across his face to complete the knee cut. All right, so we're gonna start with that and we're gonna work into other 
grip positions based off their counters and their options that they have, okay? Any questions? Let's try it, one, two, three. We're really just focused on getting like a solid horse stance position and then getting your second grip. Once you pull his back, once you get the second grip, his reaction is gonna be to pull away from you. And in the moment that he's pulling away from you, chances are he's gonna put his feet in a position to try and push you away and that's where a knee cut can slice right through the whole thing. It turns it for less of like a technical thing where you're like clearing knees and like putting pressure in like specific ways and you just lift and then drop right back into him. It's, yeah, it's a good way to like do something fast against a guard that's like tying you up. And like using posture and stance to set up a dynamic pass and not like just leave you vulnerable standing up straight, you know? Yeah. So you can feel this. Like even if their legs are in the way, when I get this grip here and then I get this grip, watch what happens to your legs. Yeah, they come down. And you're going to be trying to pull yourself back to the ground or try and come yeah. up into like a sit up guard position. But if you do that, that's yeah. how the, the position works. Yeah. So don't think about it like a traditional guard pass where you're trying to like get position, yeah. get clear things, yeah. break grips, and then go. It's literally like when you're stuck already. And I'm like, okay, I'm stuck. I can't get to my, my positions where he's out of a guard yeah. and I just start lifting instead. And then even, even if the leg doesn't go in front, it's yeah. fine because you can just. Yeah, I see this is already super compromised. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Try it like that. Thanks.